Yo, what's going on guys? Logic here with a different kind of video. Recently there was an article I saw on Twinfinite where Grayson Morales interviewed the CEO of Gungho, Kazuki Morishida. I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. It's kind of hard. But um, they brought up some pretty cool questions and more importantly, they were talking about the future content in Ninjala. So I just wanted to kind of highlight some of those things that they were talking about. One of the first questions that were brought up was about Ninjala's story. Ninjala's story and its world are centered around the characters being able to harness the power of ninja gum. Why was this gum chosen as a source of power? Where did that idea come from? Kazuki Morishita goes to respond with, When we create games, we try to start with the concept and theme of the game first, rather than starting from the world setting or story. Originally, I thought of the idea after seeing some children playing pretend Chambara with some uh, tree branches. When I saw them playing, I felt that Chambara is like human instinct that is also enjoyable. From there, we imagined a multiplayer PvP action game with Chambara plus ninja theme. But there are many ninja themed games that feature an orthodox, old school feel with a lot of blood and violence. So I wanted to create something more pop and casual that players of all ages would enjoy. When it came to designing the UI, that would be the core of the game, I happened to be chewing on some bubble gum while thinking it over. I casually blew a bubble, and at that moment, the whole idea came to my mind. Gum can be shaped into other forms and blown up into a bubble. I thought the flexibility of it being able to transform into other shapes could be used like a ninja's transformation technique, so we created the concept of gum action, which became the core of Ninjala's gameplay and became what we now have as ninja gum action game. So this is all really cool. It's every developer's dream to bring their creation to life. And that's pretty much what happened with Kazuki Morishita. You know, he's having a thought, thinking about what game he could make. And, you know, he sees some kids playing, you know, just playing sword fighting or whatever. He's got gum in his mouth. He blows a bubble and he's like, yo, that's it. That's that dude. Bringing your dream to life like that is awesome. That's something everybody would want to do. So I think that's kind of cool where he derived the the uh, the idea from so here goes the next question grayson says how long does gung-ho plan on supporting ninjala with free content how many stages would you like to see added to the game kazuki morishita goes to say we plan to continue supporting the game for long term but we also want to create content that can be enjoyed for a long time and possibly be compatible with new platforms in the future also we plan on adding new stages every season that is themed around a different country all right, so this is huge. Kazuki Morishita pretty much teases the idea that we're gonna get Ninjala on PlayStation or Ninjala on Xbox or even on PC. That's huge. If we we're able to get those players from those other platforms, that would that would just increase support for the game just like incredibly. Uh, you know, more players equals more more people that are likely to buy Jala. And then if more people buy Jala, then that means the game gets further supported. It solidifies the game pretty much because it's constantly getting that money flow and people are constantly playing. So that's awesome. I would like to see them like add like cross cross play and like cross save if they do decide to do it. Just so like if you do decide to play on PC or something, you could just continue where you left off, you know, you know, like with the switch, like maybe you want to play in your bed or whatever. You could do that. And then you're like, you know what? Let me get up. Play on my PC now or my PlayStation now. It'd be really cool and I'd love to see them do that. Uh, Ninjala has every reason to benefit from being on multiple platforms. Um, this really solidifies the future of Ninjala if they decide to go through with this. I would love to see it. All right, so the third question from Grayson is, speaking of adding content, how many story chapters will there be added to Ninjala? And when can we expect chapter two to come out? Kazuki Morishita responds with, story mode chapters will continue regularly and chapter two will be added in season three. In chapter two, a different character will be featured as the main character and new enemies will appear other than space ninjas. So I personally haven't played the story mode yet. I know what you're like, you're like, oh, Logic, how could you be making all these videos? You haven't played the story mode yet. I still like the game, it's fun. Uh, the multiplayer pulled me in, but um, you know, I'm always, I'm always super down for some story content, especially since the story seems to have like an actual narrative it's not just slopped together, you know? Um, it's got some it's got some love put into it. There's like a Ninjala manga. I believe there's a cartoon web series as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff they got going on. Um, so I, I, I can't wait to eventually get down to just checking out that stuff 
and to get more of it is really cool. So the next question that Grayson had asked was, the several episodes that are included in the first story DLC pack feature an assortment of enemies to fight. I was very surprised to find out that the final boss fight was against a gigantic soda pop bottle. Will there be more enemies like this in the future DLC story episodes? And most importantly, why soda? Can any inanimate object in Ninjala's world become alive? So my man Kazuki Morishita goes to say, new bosses will definitely be appearing in subsequent story mode chapters as we move forward. Space ninjas have a special ability where they're able to possess and manipulate inanimate objects. In chapter one, they possessed a billboard that featured a large sculpture of a soda company mascot, which was a stage object in the game. So this is pretty basic. They're just telling us that in future chapters we'll be getting new bosses, which is pretty much a given. Like we probably already knew that. Also tells us more about the space ninjas. Anybody that's played the story probably already knows that space ninjas just take over inanimate objects, which is cool. It's a cool ability, but it won't stop at space ninjas. There's going to be other factions that get introduced, so we, it's not just going to be space ninjas, but we're definitely going to see what's what's happening and what's going on. The next thing that Grayson says is, and also, can you talk about the mysterious ninja donned in blue at the end of chapter one? Where are they from? And what can we expect from the character in chapter two? Kazuki responds with, the mysterious space ninjas are extraterrestrial life forms. A long time ago, a meteor fell to Earth, causing a change in the DNA of the ecosystem in the villages surrounding the impact point, and the power of the shinobi took shelter. Space ninjas appeared on Earth with the intent of collecting and bringing back the meteor and its scattered fragments. Chapter 2 will be a continuation of Chapter 1, and the objective of the space ninja will gradually become clear. So Kazuki is pretty straightforward here. He just tells us like a synopsis of the story thus far and how we got to where we are now and what the space the space ninjas want. He also kind of hinted in the next chapter that we might find out like what their their true intentions are or what they really want or what their you know what their goals are thus far. So that's going to be really cool to, to see once it all comes into fruition. I'm really excited. Uh, I really got to eventually play the story mode and, and get into it because it, it seems really interesting so, so far. And I definitely want to just check it out. So next up by Grayson is, he says, For those that just end up playing the free-to-play multiplayer mode, that's me by the way, what are some ways that you might seek to help them pick up the lore and story through their gameplay? So Kazuki Morishita says, The main mode of play in this game is the online match play. Given that there are many users who are not interested in the single player mode, we have decided to make it available separately as DLC. However, I hope that even those users will be interested in experiencing this world and story through the web cartoon anime and the 3D CG animation, which are available to view on the official Ninjala YouTube channel. So that's pretty much going to sum up everything in this article. There's not really much else to talk about. I'm going to leave a link to the article below in the description. And I think the main takeaway from this article was Kazuki Morishita teasing the idea of putting Ninjala on other platforms. Like, that's super cool. Like, I would love to see Ninjala on PlayStation. We'd love to see it on Xbox. We'd love to see it on Steam or PC. Like, it would just be really cool. Uh, whichever one they decide to go to. Um, cross Crossplay is always a good thing. It's always cool to give players the option if they want to either play on another platform or play with other people on the platform. It's just really cool. I think every game should be doing it, honestly. Especially in 2020. We're 2020 and we, we know it's a possibility. Uh, I would love to make that a reality. But anyways, I'm rambling. That's pretty much it for this video today. I know it's a different type of video. It's not really a guide. It's just like an informational type of deal. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Take it easy. This has been Logic and I'm gone.